need your throttle tube to be able to snap back. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you do that thing down below. All right, this video is on the installation of the Oxford heated grips. I had planned to put this video together with the power relay and installing the grips all at one time. That became too long of a video, so I'm gonna chop this into two. The power relay video is already done. It's not just for heated grips. You can use that for accessories like your any type of lights that you wanna put on, maybe some other heating elements. So it, it's not just heated grips, but that was my intention is for the heated grips. Now, I do have the Oxford heated grips installed. I will go through that process. There's a few things about the heated grips. The Oxford, they can be a little bit challenging to install. I have watched a handful of videos and I saw some things that, um, that, that concerned me and how some people were doing the installs. And the biggest issue that I had was people taking Dremel tools to their throttle barrels because you're doing it by hand. You don't know if you're going to grind through an area a little bit more than another and weaken that throttle barrel. I think there's some better ways of doing that, which I go through in the video. I also think there's some ways to help the grip install a little bit easier that I also go through in the video. So if you are looking for some alternative ways and maybe a little bit easier way to install the heated grips and maybe you don't have a Dremel or you don't want to put a Dremel to your throttle barrel, this will give you an idea of what to do. Now, I did have to, I, I will admit, I did have to use a Dremel on the tabs that were on the throttle barrel. I had to cut those off and then I just used the Dremel to smooth out the tabs, but I did not use a Dremel tool to, to reduce the size of the throttle barrel in order to get the grip to fit. So anyway, if this is something you're interested in, stick around and we will get started on the install. I'm installing the Oxford grips and you are allowed to trim off from that first line here down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trim that off on both sides. I know on the throttle side, I'm gonna have to trim it off. So I'm gonna do that also on the left side. That way it's just consistent with size. So from there, it's gonna get cut off. I've been having a lot of difficulty getting this grip to go on. It's just super tight and I've gotten it to where it's going on a little bit better. But if you are also having trouble with that, uh, what I've been doing is I took some light sandpaper, I've sanded the grip down a little because of the previous grip and the grip glue that was used. And then I've also got um, just rolling the sandpaper up in the tube and sanding the inside. So it's just enough to knock it the inside down just a little so that I can get it to slide on. I think I have a little bit more sanding to do, but that's probably the easiest way to do it. Now I'm using a 400 grit. I recommend something a lot uh, more abrasive than 400. It's just what I have at the house and I don't want to make a trip to, to a hardware store. So like a 200 grit would knock this down really, really quick. I might end up having to do that anyway, but yeah, so just some sandpaper inside, twist that around, and that should help give you a little bit of extra space to get that to slide on. Just a quick note, the KTM uh, throttle barrel has these tabs that the grips uh, went around. So I have to trim each of these tabs off and smooth them out. Now, I also wanna make sure I leave room on the throttle here for my throttle lock, my Atlas throttle lock that goes in uh, behind this. So I'm gonna make sure I do that and that there's enough room for the grip as well. So I'm gonna get started on that piece.
Okay, I've got the grip on. I got a little impatient after I got it sanded down. Um, I got it to where it would slide on and off, but it was a little challenging. And once I got it close to where I wanted it, I just went ahead and left it here. There's a couple different arrangements you can make with the grip. I decided to do that because when I'm throttling, I don't mind it being here. I can still push the brake, but I should never be pulling the brake in at full throttle. So um, I have room for the brake. So I'll run the cable below. Um, it was also important to make sure I left room here for the throttle lock. So I'll put the throttle lock back on when everything is done. Another important thing to keep in mind is once you have your handguard back on, you need your throttle tube to be able to snap back and make sure it's not rubbing in here. So I've got that. It does snap back, so everything worked out. Now I did trim off the end of this uh, per the specifications on what was allowed because I knew it was going to be a little bit tight in here. But it snaps back, no rubbing, no hanging. So if you're going to do that, that is a very important step. All right, we are at the end of the install. I did show what the voltage drop was across the battery with my the heated grips turned all the way up and also with my heated jacket turned all the way up just so you'd have an idea that it is still staying within a range that will continue to charge the battery. We are not gonna be in a position where we're draining the battery. I don't exactly know what that load is gonna be. I'll have to, to try to do some calculations, but without having a DC, um, current uh, meter it really makes it challenging i do know that the heated grips have a five amp uh, fuse in it and my heated jacket has a seven and a half amp fuse so that's a 12 and a half amps i'm just going to say roughly 145 watts is what the the overcurrent or when those fuses would blow if they were both at full amperage operating range is going to be much lower than that i'm guessing at at maximum we might be running about um, 8 to 10 amps total on both those circuits together. So as far as I can tell, it's within the threshold of the stator. Now, if I burn the stator out, I will let you all know and, and tell you what I had found and that I may have overdrawn on it with my heated jacket and heated grips. I'm not concerned about it if the voltage was dropping down into the 12s and not staying at high 13s, still almost 14, then I'd be con concerned that the stator just wasn't capable of handling it um, just from a, a power standpoint. But over time, we'll see if it can handle that current drop. If you have any other questions or you have any other thoughts on this, or maybe you have a little bit different experience, please leave that in the comments below. Really appreciate that. And hopefully this was useful to you. Anyway, get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.